nice Dutch oven. Very crisp. Sounds very designer and posh. We'll scan it there. $3.99 here and $207.56 online. And uh, look at it. I mean, this is just a store opening. There's no movie stars, there's no footballers. Any other retailer would have to have um, naked people serving you to get this kind of turnout, wouldn't they? So uh, it's just amazing. It's rock and roll retail. Hi, and welcome to Inside. I'm Jenny Brocky. Retail spending is at its lowest level for 50 years. Shops are closing and thousands of jobs are at stake. And some stores are finding they're being used in a very different way. I tend to shop around a lot. I'm a bit of a tightwad when it comes to spending money on things. And so I like to make sure I'm getting a good bargain. There's a nice fossil handbag. 319 here. So there you go, 178 in the US. It's a bit of a price difference, isn't it? We've got a 254 price, which I believe is Australian pricing. A red laser is an app that runs on a smartphone and basically it uses the camera in the smartphone. You point it at the barcode on the back of the product and it will read the barcode and then it goes and checks with a number of online merchants and it will get their best prices on that product. I love James Bond. 249 here. Let's have a look. 217 online. Interestingly, that's from an Australian seller. So it's not even coming from overseas. They've just undercut them by $32. I think I'll get it online. Okay, have a look. Nice Dutch oven. Very crisse. Sounds very designer and posh. We'll scan it there. $3.99 here. And $207 online. So it's basically half the price online. Have traditional retailers been ahead of this curve and had to pull back or uh, I'd, sorry I'd, Ruslan? Yeah I wouldn't really say so and I think uh, that story there shows what traditional retailers mindsets are like because they thought oh no we're gonna have this issue let's pull it and they've relied for many many years about a consumer being inside a store and being able to use a pushy salesman to push that consumer to a certain sale. Whereas now we live in an age of open information and information is easily obtainable. You've got an app where you scan something and you can find out what it costs everywhere else. You haven't locked someone into a single store and it's this open in information. And yes, there were big companies and big retailers online a few years ago, but they didn't understand online. Online isn't just about getting your same catalogue or same products and putting them online. It's about building a community. It's about communicating with your customers and giving them the best price. If you're going to charge the same price in your online store and in your bricks and mortar store, your online customers are going to come along and say, hang on a second, why are you ripping me off? Why are you making me pay the rent of your stores? If you're going to charge a cheaper price online, people are going to stop coming to your stores and they're going to need to be shut down. So you've got a bit of a catch-22 there and it needs to be done by people that understand online retail. And you've made it onto BRW's rich list by building an online store that sells electronics, yeah? Oh, we're a manufacturer direct to consumer, so the online store is one part of our business model, but yeah, okay. it's been very successful. Shop fronts? No. No shop fronts. No shop That'd fronts. be taking our business a few steps backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, I think Russell. it's important to remember as well that websites don't make themselves, they don't run themselves, they don't auto customer service and there's people behind all of these things employed to make all of this happen, whether it be a group buying site, whether it be some uh, business like Kogan that's got heaps of people in the office, customer service staff, hundreds of people employed on a daily basis in logistics uh, to make the business happen. There's all of these jobs are shifting in, in the industry in which they're going to be. So even though bricks and mortar retail is slowing down and we're going to see a huge change in the way people shop, it doesn't mean jobs are going to go. When Henry Ford said, I'm inventing the production line and here we're going to make cars more affordable, um, yes, I'm sure the people that made horse carriers carriages were whinging and saying, oh, but what about our jobs? But that created a whole auto automotive industry. So I think that the jobs will always be there. They'll just be in different areas and with different skills. OK, Ruslan, uh, you're an Australian business. Your customers do pay GST. Do pay GST. Would you like to see people who buy TVs from overseas paying GST too? Uh, makes no difference to us. We're so far ahead of the competition on price that you can charge them GST will still be cheaper. We've got companies and 
customers from all over the world begging us to expand Kogan there. So we've expanded to the UK. We're going to expand to two This is a real countries. Spruker show, isn't it? I mean, so, we just get, everyone's going to so spruik yeah, their products. A, the other thing is, those apps showed, like what we saw at the start of the show, that we're not talking about savings of 10%. We're talking about savings of about 50%. The but why can, you, why can you do that when bricks and mortar retailers can't? Because we innovate. We've taken a business model and we said, what could we do better? And we've changed the way business has been done for the last 20 and 30 years. And we've said, well, this is the way business should be done in 2011. And as a result of that, we're exporting our products and services worldwide and have customers there begging for them. I'd like to jump in for the yeah. uh, bricks and mortar retailers because they do innovate. And, and we might be arguing about speeds of innovation, maybe in different categories, potentially in, um, in, in different companies. We're also talking about arguing about price because in the end that what that's what the consumer looks for. It's actually actually thing. it's yeah, not the number it's one not. thing it, it, it is range and you've, he you've heard that from um, a, a lot of the panelists here and you've also heard that um, there are other factors that make value including what do I know about the brand how do I trust it can I return it what's the cost of returning it etc and I guess all I'm saying there is there are great examples and we heard you know the online retailers um, the top online retailers overseas do happen to have a very strong mix of bricks and mortar companies in them and um, I believe that the Australian retail environment does innovate, will innovate and that they will but come to the... How has it changed in the last 20 years? I'm sorry? How how has a Westfield shopping centre changed in the last 20 years? Massive changes. It doesn't matter whether it goes well, from can the... You, can you give me an example of yeah, a change? Yeah, absolutely. So whether it's the um, the services and activities that you find in those centres, whether it's the retailers themselves... So the products have Apple, changed, but the Apple way in which Apple is a sold. great example of a retailer that that wasn't in physical Westfield centres. That's and why is Apple's successful. One of the biggest OK, sets. let's go to break. That's, and we'll that's have a, Apple, we'll have a look. OK, we're, let's go to break and we'll have a look at the stores defying the trend, a store you've just talked about. Uh, Zara is a very innovative business model. They've totally changed the way in which they produce clothes to get the latest fashion to people quicker. Wherever you put those stores, people will go to them, whether it be on the high street or online, because they're creating an awesome product, like Apple is as well. So the bottom line is, give consumers value, whether you're bricks and mortar or online, show them here is the value of interacting with us. Whether it be Apple or Zara or another company, consumers will come. If if it's coming down to a price game, it's going to be very tricky for bricks and mortar to compete online. Okay, where, you've got, where you're comparing Pink Lady Apples with Pink Lady Apples, and it just comes down to the price, online will win that every day. There's a lot of exclusivity around the products they can bring in. And I I think what you're seeing with what Ruslan's done is he has basically bypassed all of that and is getting someone to make his products, bring them straight in and bypassing all that distribution. And of course, every layer of distribution has extra profit on it for somebody. And a lot of the really innovative retailers here are the ones that are doing the same thing with other, type, other types of products. Retail is all about the consumer. It's about giving them exactly what they want, whether it be the best price or the best possible service like the uh, running shop we just heard about. So it's all about the consumer and finding innovative ways in which to give them exactly what they want.